Some might ask what's in this box, and Tardano might be the answer. And actually it is the answer, it's the GTC 2000 telescopic boom cooler crane by Tardano. The model is made by IMC, and as you can see it is specially licensed merchandise. First up let's put the box on the cranes etc weigh bridge. And it's about £5, 4 ounces, or in metric speak, 2.37 kilograms. We move on and open up the box. And as we reach in, there are nice finger grips we can use to pull out the trays inside. So far so good, the packaging is thoughtfully designed. And embedded in the top tray is a build manual for the model, and we'll look at that in more detail later. Another nice touch is there's no messy tape to have to cut. The two trays are locked together by plastic clips and that's so much nicer. So, off of the lid and there we can see the parts are wrapped in soft paper. We need the giant hand crane to carefully lift out the first parts of the model. And as always, you want to handle delicate models carefully. In fact, in the box there are many different parts besides the model. And there are also different numbered bags containing different pin sizes. Also included are a full set of decent quality tools. The included build manual is very good. And like all good manuals, there is a parts list. And that includes everything that you find in the box. What follows then are detailed instructions of how to assemble the various parts. And the main aspects of the functionality are also described. The manual also describes how to put the model into a transport configuration. So there's lots of flexibility and it's all described here. Lastly there's some dimensional information about the real crane and it also lists the scaled dimensions. We will begin by assembling the model into its working mode. And the first thing we can do is to install two ballast boxes, and these fit between the crawler tracks, one at each end. The boxes have hooks formed at the top corners, and you insert these hooks into holes in the cross frames, and there the boxes just hang in place. There are four jacks used for self-assembly, and you can pin these so they don't flap about in working mode. Next we come onto the main counterweight, and this is nicely formed out of separate plates. To hang the counterweight you can see that there are a couple of holes just in the top parts, and these get offered up into slots at the rear of the crane. It is a little fiddly to get them in, but once they are located, you can then move forward and stick the pins in. There's one on each side, and you have to be a little careful with pins like this because if you handle the crane roughly, they will drop out. Next, we can add a small piece of detail, and that's a ladder, and we can mount that on the side of one of the track frames. There are tabs on the ladder which get pressed into holes on the frame. We move on to a small lattice fly jib which can be hung at the front, and to begin with, we'll hang it in basically what is a transport position. You can also fit an optional head sheave, and that also pins into position. This attachment also has some flexibility, and that's because if you just pin it on one side, you can rotate it to an out of service position. Another optional part that you can fit is a second winch assembly, and as you can see, this just gets offered up at the rear of the crane. To secure it in place, you need to use four steel pins. And whilst they go in easily, you have to watch out because they come out easily. Another nice touch is that the winches are operated using a supplied tool, but you can make display poses more accurate by fitting winch motors into the open holes. So, what you've seen so far is all the assembly needed to get the model into a working mode. And to pose it, we'll just lift the boom up and use a supplied key on a tiny grub screw in the hydraulic ram. These are very small parts, so don't apply too much force. Lastly, we fit the hoist cutoff to the rope. The 
The track pads are metal and they look very good. And there's some nice detailing on the track frames with tiny graphics. Also adding detail are the steps. And although this crane comes out of the DMAG factory, they are all now branded to Dano. The access platforms around the model look really good with very fine mesh grills. And the crane cab is similarly highly detailed. It includes various graphics around the outside. And on the inside of the cab, the joysticks are red tipped. There are more sharp graphics on the side of the body. And moving on to the counterweight, there are sharp graphics and usable lifting lugs. It's also nice to see some hydraulic hoses running to the area of the winch drums. The rope used on the model is also of decent quality. There's some more nice detailing on the opposite side of the model. And you can see that there are some nice textures and casting details. And all of it combines to give an authentic appearance. The main boom ram has a metal jacket. And the profile of the telescopic boom sections is very good too. The inner sections also have a two colour finish. The metal shivs on the model are painted white to represent the nylon type shivs used on the real crane. The luffing ram is plastic, but the single line hook shown here is not supplied with the model. The only hook that is included is this nice looking metal one. We begin our look at the features by rolling the crane on a rough surface, and the metal tracks perform really well. They are smooth and precise with no stickiness. The other very nice feature is that the track frames are extendable, and you can replicate any of the setups of the real crane. Also really nice is the way the walkway platforms are revealed as the track frame is extended. Also super smooth on this model is the rotation of the crane. There's no stickiness and no rocking. At the smaller end of the scale, the access steps on the track frames can be opened out. And the crane cab can also be tilted to a good angle. Another feature is the pull out platform under the cab. Although it is quite tricky to get hold of. And for that, the supplied tools are quite useful. To operate a winch, you can remove the winch motor if you fitted it and then use the supplied key. The winch drum has some spring loading and it also works smoothly. It should also perform reasonably well at holding a load. What we'll do now is to fold out the swing away jib and fix it to the end of the boom. To facilitate that we open up the bracket that it sits on and then we swing it right round to engage it fully with the end of the boom. The two hydraulic luffing rams are pinned into place. And once again the pins go in easily but they will also drop out easily. To allow luffing we need to remove the top securing pin. And then we've run some rope from the second winch drum. It is odd that on this model there is no hook supplied for the second rope. And the manual tells you to just tie the rope on to the supplied Tadano plate. What we'll actually do is add on a single line hook block. But this is not supplied with the model and then we'll hang the plate from it. Hopefully IMC will supply a second hook with future releases of the model. The luffing jib can be set at a different angle and the hydraulic rams for it are very stiff. It's best to hold onto the pins whilst you do it. Telescoping out the boom sections works in the normal way and it's very smooth. And each boom section is lockable at 100% and 45%. With the model fully assembled, let's put it back on the Weybridge. And it's just over £4. Or for fans of the 100 Club, it's 1.84 kilograms. Fully extended, the model is big. And it reaches about 47 inches or 120 centimetres. Another display option we have for the model is to show it as a transport load. To remove the tracks we first disconnect the sliding walkways and then with the model on its back we need to undo two nuts and bolts which secure the track frames to the tracks. 
Another tool is included to help you get the nut off the bolt. And here we're using the pliers just to pull the bolt out. Once both bolts are out, the track frame is easily separated. We can then push the extending beams in and the crane is ready for the low loader. And once it's on board, you can also use all of the other parts to form a nice looking convoy. You can also use the self-assembly outriggers to simulate unloading. They fold out and then you can use pins to hold them into the vertical position. And once they're in position you can unscrew the jacks to lower the pads. Here we've shown the crane lifting itself up with pads resting on some temporary blocks. And as long as we've got the crane up high enough we can just drive away the low loader. Of course you need to be careful not to knock the model when it's resting on rickety old blocks like this. The crane can then extend its track supports and then a track frame can be wheeled in and the crane can offload it and attach it to the extended beams. Of course this crane model also looks great with a suitable load. This is a long awaited model from IMC of the Tadano GTC 2000. It's very detailed and multifunctional and the quality level is high. And really the only thing missing is a single line hook block. But in all other respects this is a really nice model. And overall it is rated as excellent. Excellent.